Rise and ground, folks. We're in for a doozy today, you guys. I was at this customer's property a few months ago. He has like at least three or four units, and guys, with this particular unit, I think this is like the bedroom unit on the third floor. I believe last summer. And guys, by the way, these units are like less than 10 years old. Everything's already for today. Last summer we came out and I believe the customer, the system was flat on charge. And at that time, the customer said that no one ever had to add refrigerant last year to that unit. And what we did was we ended up refilling the system. We, and we also put some leak sealant in that unit last year. But guys, I came out here, once again, this is last summer. I wanna say this is like around, what, maybe last May or June. It wasn't too late in the summer, but guys, I went out there yesterday and that unit was flat on charge. So guys, being that this is a newer unit, we're gonna do a leak check. And guys, you'll see when, once I get here, I, I know this guy has at least 200 feet of line set, so. I'm prepared for the worst, but I'm definitely hoping for the best. I'll, I'll, I'll vlog more once I get inside. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Guys, last time I was here, I was around the corner, but this is a totally separate unit. This is a newer carrier unit. And guys, I just got here and I filled it up to 400. And guys, the history here, these are relatively newer units. This is a three ton unit, R4 tonight, put in 20, 2021. And guys, the only thing I do know is unfortunately every single time we've been here it was like on a busy day right now it's only about like 75 degrees out so today is the perfect day to do these leak checks and guys the line set literally goes down in the basement and then it extends over to the other side of the house and it goes up to the third floor so i'm hoping that the leak isn't in the line but what i want to do is i had just had the customer turn the unit off i'm going to pull the handle out the disconnect and I'm gonna pop the top and I'm gonna start out here first. And I'm gonna basically use my soap bubbles. I'm gonna spray this coil down, spray the joints, spray everything we can see before we go downstairs. But let me get everything open. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys. It's been about 15 minutes. And this unit is still holding at 400. I just popped the top and I didn't go downstairs or go to the evap coil yet, but I just sprayed the discharge line because I know these things are notorious for leaks. But everything out here looks okay. I didn't see any oil stains or any physical signs of leaks and of course I don't hear anything but what I want to do is I'm gonna get my soap bubbles and I want to go downstairs and start spraying that line see if I hear anything and if I don't hear anything downstairs I'm gonna go upstairs to that evac coil I'll see you guys in a little bit in the basement and that is the line set from where it penetrates out the outside wall. And guys, at 400 PSI, based on me not having any pressure in the system, and this thing, this refrigerant basically leaking out within a year, adding 400 PSI, you'll definitely hear that leak. So, that's our run. And it shoots across. Here. And from that point it goes across and then it goes upstairs. 
Now, I'm getting ready to go upstairs to that EVAP. But before I go to the EVAP, I wanted to come down here first and just make sure that I didn't hear any hissing sounds. And I don't hear anything. All right, let's go up to that EVAP coil. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. This is the coil. Hey guys, bone dry. No oil stains, no sound. And we definitely don't wanna add more nitrogen. The test pressure is 450. Right now I have 400 PSI in the unit. If I go past 450, I'm basically gonna blow a hole in the coil. But yeah, everything is soaked down and I hear nothing. Let's go outside and let's see if the pressure went down. All right, guys. I'm back at the condenser, and once again, no sounds. And my PSI did go down by like five. I believe I filled this up to four or five, and it's at a four. So, guys, without confirming this, if I had to put money on it, I know that this there's a leak somewhere in the line set. And if we have to open up the drywall in the basement, then so be it. But it kind of sucks. Let me just hit this last channel over here. It kind of sucks having a leak, but you can't hear it or see it. But what I'm gonna do is I can close the valves on this condenser. And once again, I don't want to overfill this unit. That evac coil upstairs is only pressure tested up to 450. So unfortunately, we just can't keep adding pressure to this unit until something leaks. We don't want to blow the joints on the coil. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna close up this condenser. I'm gonna close the valves, and at this point, guys, I could break down the line set. And like I said, guys, upstairs in the coil, at the evac coil, I sprayed every joint, even the TXV, all the all the distributor tubes in the evac coil. No bubbles, no nothing, no sound. But the only thing I can't see is where the line set goes inside that drywall. So, and yeah, nothing's bubbling out here. So yeah, let me pack this up. I'm gonna close the valves on this condenser to at least isolate my condenser. And I'm gonna go back inside. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Guys, what the fuck? Take a look at this. <laughs> so like I said, we dropped about literally five psi in like 30 minutes and guys the only thing i did was i went to my truck to get my service wrench to close the valves and i was very suspicious of that panel here i know this customer got the siding put on here less than two years ago so i'm thinking maybe the siding people might have kinked the line set and guys something told me to spray take the caps off the service valves and spray <laughs> the top of the valves. And look at that, guys. <laughs> now, guys, let me explain to you here. This is something that's small enough that the AC will still work, but this will result in refrigerant leaking out. And, guys, this is probably going to take 
close to a few months, but eventually this could cause our unit out here to become bone dry. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta get my Allen key because with my service wrench, the adapter sometimes gets stuck in the bigger valve. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna try to tighten this a little bit and see if it stops. But worst case, if by me tightening this valve doesn't work, then we're gonna have to order a new service valve. And yeah guys, shit man. <laughs> I was if <laughs> if I didn't see that leak there, I would have been ready for war. I already got my drywall gun and my drywall knife. I was getting ready to start cutting it, cutting the ceiling of that basement. And like I said, guys, the two biggest things when you do leak checks, for one, you got to be patient, and two, you can't get fixated on a certain area because, guys, without even doing what I did, I was thinking about this job last night. I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna have to open up the drywall. I was fixated on thinking that there's a leak in the line set. And guys, sometimes that could trip you out. Always, once again, be patient. And two, don't get locked into a certain area. Just take your time and don't overlook the most obvious areas. In this case, it was our service valve. And like I said, guys, I knew when I first started here this morning, I wanted to eliminate my condenser 100%. I did not want to overlook outside and then start ripping things up inside. But guys, definitely don't get fixated on a certain area. And for one, you just got to be patient. Because I know, guys, the first time I was here, and like I said, this is definitely on us. The first time we were here, the only thing I did was I pre well, I actually recharged it and then I... I just put the uh, the leak sealing in, but guys, you didn't see this, but as soon as I took the cap off of that that suction valve, I seen a lot of that leak sealing right on the top of that that's that service valve there. So that pretty much confirms exactly what was going on. So now I got to get my Allen key set and. Hopefully, we can stop this from leaking. And I know it's getting ready to rain soon, so I'm trying to beat this rain, but so be it. That's the good thing about doing leak checks on milder days. Guys, there's no rush. So, I definitely don't wanna, after, hopefully if I'm able to, to stop this suction valve from leaking, I'm gonna go inside and I want to look at one more time at the line set because I thought I seen some oil stains on the inside of that wall where it penetrates through the basement. But since this is the only, this is the only obvious, like I said, leap that I see, I definitely want to try my best to fix this. But like I said, I definitely want to, I'm going to babysit this unit probably for the next hour or two, regardless. Because guys, yeah, these leaks are always a pain in the ass. So if you can, afford the time to just like I say make things right I definitely don't want to come back here for the same issue again so yeah guys let me get my island key and let's see what happens here hey guys once again you can already be too safe I found this piece of 7 8 coming out the drywall before it bends out what I did was I replaced about two feet of line set on this side and also on the other side. So basically guys, I spoke with the customer and he basically said that any line set down here that looks like it's getting ready to go, he just wants to get it replaced. So guys, this was the only piece that I found that was like discolored. Everything else looks okay, including the line set upstairs. So luckily I didn't have to screw around with the drywall. Like I said, we got both valves leak checked and everything outside is copacetic also we just cut and replaced what we've seen that was discoloring down here and everything is still intact so now i got everything in the vacuum and i gotta do this one time for the one time 
I don't know what the name is of this. But you gotta shuffle this until it gets to three on the other side. All right, let me see what I got here. Hold on, guys. All right, one down, two to go. Five. All right, hold on. Last one. Give me a three. All right, that one didn't count, guys. Hold on. Let me use this rail. All right, fuck it. Yeah, shit is harder than it looks. All right, guys. So, since I have everything in the vacuum, I got to go upstairs and put the insulation back and put the door back on the evap coil. Let me pack everything up and I'll be right back. I'll see you in a little bit. Hold on. One last time. Shit. All right. All right, I'm done. All right, let me put everything back together upstairs. I'll be back. guys I got the door back on I got the guys this is a two zone setup they have a third floor zone and the second floor zone on this unit so technically this is a third floor bedroom unit and also this third floor unit also does an area downstairs on the second floor but let me turn the other thermostat on and then I'm gonna go outside and I want to check my pressures. All right, guys. I'm gonna crack the vacuum and I put my handle back in the disconnect. And yeah, uh, I fastened the disconnect back to the wall. It was just a drywall screw that was loose. And right now, our suction line tends to still dropping. I checked my sub cooling. I'm at a 10 degree sub cool, which is good because right now it's not even 80 degrees outside. I think for today and tomorrow, it's gonna to be about like 72, 75 degrees. So today it's not really like a hot day, but there is a, a decent amount of humidity. So today is it's technically warm enough for us to get accurate numbers. So I don't have to come back again to check the pressures. And right now, what am I at? 41. I'm at close to a 20 degree superheat. And guys, here's the thing on this. Remember, this unit does technically the third floor and I think one or two rooms on the second floor. But the third floor, the room temperature was at like, what, 74? And then the, the second floor, the room temperature was at 72. So the customer had the third floor off. So I believe right now, that's probably why my superheat is a little high. Just due to the fact that that, that third floor it's a little, I'm not gonna say it's hot, but it's definitely, it wasn't like really that, that comfortable up there. Maybe that, that customer doesn't run that third floor as often, but yeah guys, I'm glad I was able to locate this issue. And most importantly, like I said, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that, that drywall downstairs. Cause like I said, every leak check is different guys. But like I said, the biggest two things that you can take from this video is one, definitely got to be patient sometimes you can get lucky and it'd be an obvious sound which will lead you to figuring out what's leaking but sometimes it like i say you might have to, you might have to get yourself a good two or three hours of taking everything apart taking your time and like i said isolate every single thing you can to make sure that like i said you know there isn't anything obvious but as far as that that suction line service valve guys the only thing i had to do is i just had to crack it with an allen key towards the left remember guys left is up to the right, it's pumping it down, meaning you're closing it. It was already open, but I just had to crack it a little bit more to the left because it was leaking. Like I said, guys, freaky things do happen on a few installs. I know sometimes the, the suction valve can leak, and all you gotta do is you gotta crank it a little, maybe like a, not even a quarter of a turn. You just gotta crank it a little bit to the left, and sometimes the leaks go away. But yeah, guys, that was, a, that was an interesting find. I'm glad I found the leak because like I said, guys, <laughs> the whole time I was under the, the assumption that something's going with, going on with the line set. But like I said, guys, remember the two things. Give yourself some time. 
and never get fixated on a certain area because like I said guys by me zoning in on this line set I should have checked the valves like I said the first time when I got out here when I started um, leak checking this, this this condenser coil but you live and you learn guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up I gotta clean some stuff out of the van I got another install I gotta pack up for for tomorrow and guys I gotta rock out this is a simple fun and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.